You need to get used to those bulky gloves. Notice the blue handles around. You can grab them and pull or push yourself in order to change the position on the spaceship. Now pull yourself towards the computer. Grab the wrench in front of you. Good. The wrench might be needed if something breaks. You can attach it to one of the stickers to keep it from flying around. The computer in front can be powered on with the bottom left button. The column of buttons on the left changes the computer mode. For now, switch to prog mode to display the currently loaded program. The bottom row has different options depending on the selected computer mode. Let's press the next button in order to proceed. On the left side of the computer, you will find a radio. That's where my voice comes from. Listen to it carefully. Your survival may depend on your correct understanding of orders. If you forgot the last command, push the button on the radio to hear it again. If you forgot the last command, push the button on the radio to hear it again. If you forgot the last command, push the, just kidding. That's it. Look around. You should see a data pad. Grab it. The data pad is a device that should help if you forget what to do. It always displays the checklist for the current procedure. Notice stickers above the screen. Stick the data pad to it to keep it from flying around. Free floating objects can be dangerous in space, so keep your ship tidy. Remember, the data pad will always help you figure out next steps, so you won't get lost in space. When ready to proceed, hit the next button on the computer. train the life support system. As you can imagine, it's crucial. If you don't know how to support life on your capsule, you may cease to live. But don't worry, this is a training scenario. It means everything is simulated. It is not possible for you to die. The alarm panel above your head will warn and then alarm you if something with the life support or power is wrong. Here is a simulation. Press the master alarm button to disable the sound of the alarm. That will be fine for now. But remember in real life situations, this won't make the problem go away. You'll need to fix it. The life support system is located on the right hand side of the cabin. Your breathing produces CO2. At high concentrations, it is toxic, so you need to filter it out from the cabin air. The current filter is unfortunately full and needs to be replaced. You will find a spare filter in one of the drawers. Take it and plug it in the filter slot. Good job. We will now regenerate the spent filter. Grab it and move to the middle of the cabin. Put the spent filter in the filter regenerator slot. Then pull the red handle next to it. Great! After regeneration, a filter is ready to be reused. You don't want to find yourself without a clean filter. Let's get back to the front of the cabin. Push next on the computer to continue. If the air in the spaceship becomes toxic, decompression will get rid of all the good and bad stuff from the cabin. The big red valve on the right side of the cabin is the decompression valve. Use the decompression valve to bring the CO2 level back to nominal. Good, now close the valve. 
staffing. As you see, the oxygen level also decreased. Use the oxygen valve to add O2 in the cabin. That's enough. Now, close the valve. Good job. Remember to keep the amount of O2 in the optimum range. Too much oxygen can be explosive, while not enough, while you need it to breathe. Now observe the situation their O2 level is correct, but pressure is too low. Use the nitrogen valve to correct the pressure in the cabin. The nitrogen is neutral and will help you to keep the pressure in check. Too much pressure will increase the cabin temperature. On the other hand, low pressure will chill the cabin. Both situations are not nominal and may cause components to fail. Stabilize the atmosphere using the valve. Nominal values are marked as green on the gauges. Now you should be able not only to stay alive, but also keep your ship functional. 
Both are necessary for the success of any mission.
Okay, now use the thruster under your left arm to give your spaceship some backward thrust. Grab it and pull it towards you. Don't worry, we've limited your speed now, so you won't go too fast. Now push the thruster forward to slow down and get some forward speed. Now let's try out the handbrake. The handbrake adapts your speed to your target. It's a great invention. Use it if you lose control of your movement. You can now practice moving the ship. When you are ready to move on, press next button. Now we're going to practice the approach. Switch the computer to target selection mode and select Soyuz as the new target. Good. Now switch the computer back to prod mode in order to continue the training program. Good. On the right side of the computer you see the alignment panel with the nav ball. This tool will help you orient yourself in space. The buttons below the nav ball control which direction is shown on the nav ball. For now we want to see where the target is, so press the tar button. Below the nav ball, you will also notice a single switch. It is used to lock your rotation to the currently selected direction. Switch it on. Use the joystick to point the ship directly at your target. Okay, pilot. Time to approach the target. Above your head is the engine control panel. Your spaceship is equipped with two types of engines, powerful OMS and light RCS. Each engine has a high or low power mode. For proximity approach, set your engines to RCS and high power. Put the mode switch to transmission. Use the joystick to eliminate the drift, represented by the bars attached to the crosshair. Okay, now use the thruster under your left arm to give your spaceship some forward thrust. Don't worry, we've limited your speed now, so you won't go too fast. Great, we're moving forward. Notice the vertical bar on the left of your visor. It shows your speed towards the target. This information is also displayed above the computer. You can always see your relative speed and distance to the currently selected target. Pilot, use the joystick to adjust the direction of your movement. You want the circle to overlay the square on your visor.
You need to enter this docking corridor in order for the docking procedure to start. the docking corridor to start the docking procedure. Now in position to begin the docking procedure, move to the back of the spaceship. 